morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, good morning. Woo! We were worth saving. Yes, we are. We are worthy. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful by Anthony Brown. Yes, got us going this morning. Mm. Blessings, blessings. I love that one. He has um, blessings on blessings. Woo! Blessings on blessings bounce. Now, that's one line dance that I will learn. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have seen that, but you got to look at that. Check that out by Anthony Brown. Doing his thing. Good morning, everyone. It's so good. Good morning. To see you. Good morning to my wonderful husband. I thank God for you today, every day. I thank God for you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I thank mm. God for your support. I thank God for you. you good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look at you. You win the first to log in award, Miss Charles. <laughs> you did it. Today we're talking about financial freedom. Financial freedom, y'all. Oh my goodness. How you doing, Mr. Smith? How are you doing? How are you doing, Mr. Goodrich? How are you doing? I got some of my special guests got their microphones open because they will talk to me and help us help somebody. <laughs> it, I mean, you would be amazed that the impact that your life can have on someone else's life. I think we just take it for granted. We think that we don't matter, but we do. This is Sunday at sunrise, and I am J.B. Bryan, the chief of Afroeconomics. Yes, indeed. And I started J.B. Bryan Financial Group, a registered investment advisory firm in 1995 and brought forth Afroeconomics. Yes, indeed. And the fifth principle of Afroeconomics is including God into your financial decisions. So Sunday at Sunrise became a great opportunity to just grow myself, to grow. Because you do all week, I don't know if you're like me, but all week we're doing things. But Saturday night and Sunday morning, it gives me the opportunity to grow with God. The things that this Sunday at Sunrise has done for my life, you know, it, 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 I, I, there's, I'm sure there's someone out there like, oh my goodness, why would she get up 7 a.m. on Sunday morning? If you woo, could just know the life that this has added to me, the quality of life that God brings. The more I serve him, the more I acknowledge him, you know, God, I, I just really can't give him enough time. I really can't give him enough time. So I just appreciate those of you who, who share your Sunday morning with me and hopes that it kicks off your week the way it does for me. I mean, what a blessing <laughs> to be able to just share together. So if there's a Sunday morning and you go to afroeconomics.com and you register and you, um, something that the members share with me moves you, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You might say, hey, Bridget Davis made a comment that really touched me. I will make sure that she knows. If, if anything that I say you have a question about, we also make sure that we put this into our um, YouTube. It's in the Afro Economics with J.B. Bryan YouTube channel. So make sure that if there's something that you need to hear again, or you have a family member that this needs to be shared with, I, I, I think that we have a responsibility to help one another. And, you know, knowledge helps us all grow. So bring it to me. And I appreciate all the knowledge that you all bring to me, seriously. So we're talking about uh, freedom, financial freedom. And you were saying, well, dang, they must talk about that all the time. But we don't. We talk about so much. <laughs> and I said, oh, let's just think talking about freedom. 
financial freedom. There's so much about financial freedom in God's word. It, it, I, I literally can talk for years, days, just about scripture and word that's in it. In the fifth chapter of my book, Afroeconomics, Our Black Wealth Matters, you know, which when you join is you can get the and download the ebook for free. The audible book is at audible, but it's available to you. But the fifth chapter is full of scripture that for financial empowerment straight out of the Bible. So let's, let's talk. And I want your feedback, you know, about financial freedom, you know, this morning. And then, you know, and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, Start. I'm gonna start with a with prayer. With a prayer, dear God, in Psalm 118, verse 25, save now. I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. We are praying that the greed of money would not entrap our hearts, Lord, but instead, Lord, help us to only hunger and thirst after you and your righteousness. May we correctly use what you have provided for us. Help us to remember, God, that we are blessed and that we should bless others as well. Dear God, remind me and remind us all to extend a helping hand to those who are less fortunate. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare our spiritual and financial breakthrough is here. Amen. Mm. Oh, amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. So, so let's say, let's expand on financial freedom. Financial freedom and financial freedom means if you search it in textbooks and things, it will say that you get to make life decisions without being stressed out about the financial impact of that financial need because you are prepared. You control your finances instead of being controlled by your finances. That's a definition of financial freedom. And as a financial professional, too often we determine, I, I see this, that, that we determine financial freedom relative to someone else, mm -hmm. you know, like what they have or what they're going through. And if you're not, if you're not rolling with that, or you don't have that, you know, then we think that, oh, if they have that and I don't have that, then I should have that, you know, and you know, give it a name, like keeping up with the Joneses, but keeping up with the Smiths, keeping up with the, you know, that comes by so many names. So, but how can your financial freedom sincerely really should it be based on where you are relative to someone else when it's about you having control over your financial needs so so much of financial true financial freedom comes from our relationship with god and i remember um yesterday i had a, a meeting with miss sims and she says jb is there an extra cost for these things that you're saying that we got to do, you know? And I said, no, no, it's all included in your membership. And she said, praise God, JB, that's amazing. <laughs> and <clears throat> when I was thinking about this, I said, wow, that's like similar to God. You know, like when I think about God, that how he provides all that I need at no extra cost at all. Like God only asks that, that we accept him into our life and follow his commandments. There's no, there's no extras required. Like if, if I want, you know, to accomplish this Lord, then I got to do um, commandment 13, 14, 15, you know, like, no. All we have to do is follow God all of our life and we will be provided for all of our life at no extra cost. Some see their provision as amazing. And some look at their provision that God has provided and say, I need to have more. This is not enough. So 
even though the person who looks at their provision as not enough may have actually more than the person who looks at what God provides to them in amazement. Because they may look at things the way God has <laughs> instructed me to look at things that you ain't got to have anything. But if not for my grace and mercy upon you, you know what I'm saying? I deemed you worthy of this. And be thankful and be grateful. Mm. How often we see that if we want more, you know, that we, we leave God out of that thought. But I really believe that if we want more, all we have to do is give more. Like, if I want to grow my business, all I have to do is help more people. Help more people. A lady told me that years went by and people would walk up to her and say, you just should call, you know, this lady, uh, J.B. Bryan. And she said a couple more years ago by and somebody would say, you need to call, you know, J.B. Bryan. Like, and then a couple more years went by and she said, we, you, you need to call. And then just one day she said, I just finally said, I'm, I'm going to call you. <laughs> that, uh, you know, do we do that with God? Like, the, you know, that you'll listen to something or somebody's listening to this and they're going through a challenge. And I'm saying like, all we need is God. Just call on God. Like, you know, and then in, in a couple more years will go by and you'll be miserable. And, you know, and then you call, you know, you won't. And then in a couple more years, you know, and you'll hear something else and or you'll come back. Like, imagine the people who have heard me talk about God's provision for the last 26 years and still have not given God the credit. Mm. I remember when I first started my firm, I had a workshop that I would go around and do for free, of course, called What Would Jesus Do? Financial management, what would Jesus do? And I remember the day that it came to me, and I was so, you know, young in the work because I started the business in my 20s, of course. So, you know, here I am, like, I, and, and, and I was just looking at these financial principles and I look it up and I, the, and God, I'm telling you, there was no Google at that time. And I will find the word that talks about that financial principle. <laughs> I was amazed. And I would go into um, churches and present it. And the people would sit there and their mouth like just literally would be open. Like, I got to get this together. God already told me to do it. I never thought it was there. I remember when I first released the book and one of my long-term clients, he said, I had no idea there was so much scripture about finances. Giving in the absence of having all that we need, that's faith. So I'm saying that if we give more, you know what I'm saying? That, that if we want to receive more, that we have to have faith to give more. And that's just not about money. That's about giving of yourself, giving of your service, giving of your commitment, you know, giving of your time to helping more. Because money is the easy part. But actually helping people change their lives and create a life of peace and, you know, helping people in the way that God has given you, you know, how generous is that? What's faithful about giving just because you have more than enough? And that's what a lot of people do. I, I remember when I first started my career and uh, a senior, you know, uh, um, that had been in the business a long time, you know, he says to me, like the, um, you know, I see what you're doing, but I think that you should wait until you got more money under your you know, self and you, you're doing more money before you start like doing all this stuff for us. Because, you know, that you, you, you know, I, I understand what you're what you're doing, but you know, that's, that's a, that's a big sacrifice to, to just do that. And, and then, you know, I'm so glad that I didn't listen. I know that the advice was wisdom was worldly wisdom and it was right. I would have more money today if I gave less. 
but I would not have the prosperity and, and, the, and the wealth that only comes from God. You know, so if we only look at our financial freedom as, you know, money, as the definitions and textbooks describes it, then you will never really have financial, you know, freedom for many, many, many people because they'll feel that they never have enough. But if we include God into our financial freedom and that we realize that all we need is enough in order for God to correctly use us because he will keep filling the pot up. Do you have enough faith to give even when your pot is empty? I mean, I can't tell you how many times people told me you're not in a position to give the way you give. You don't need to do that. You need to put a little cash app up on the YouTube or something. Get that money. You know, but do you understand the priceless blessing that I get by giving and not asking? That God keeps it flowing. Not asking when he doesn't ask for anything back, but to praise him, love him, be an example, give your life to making the life of others better. Because mm. the blessing is in the giving. That's why God gives us so much so that we can keep on giving. In John chapter 10, verses 9 through 11, it says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Amen. You know, I read in that I am the chosen one. I am. We should all feel that we are the chosen one that we are required to lay down our life to make life better for everyone that God puts on our path. Everyone. They don't have to stay, but make sure that everyone who touches your life is better having gone past your way. <clears throat> mm. He said they will come in and go out and find pasture. Nine it will come in. Nine minutes, come starting now. Mm, mm, mm. So, so, so then financial freedom is like this. In Psalms chapter one, verse three, he will be like a tree planted by the streams of water that produces its fruits in its season, whose leaf also does not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. So we don't have to worry. Whatever we do shall prosper. Whose leaf also does not wither. He promised us this. We don't have to worry about moisturizer and anti-aging cream. All we need to worry about is keeping ourselves planted in God. So that he is always our major form of nutrition. And will always, to the end of our time, be providing fruit to this planet. In 1 John chapter 5, verses one, um, 14 through 15, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked him. Not sure if y'all hear me well. I can't believe I just thought about this. This might be a little better, is it? <laughs> a, little, a little better. We heard, we heard you though. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. So you know that 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 he he says that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. First John chapter five, verses fourteen through fifteen. Mm that he will give to us according to his will for us. So if things that we want, we don't get, we have to trust. We have to have confidence in knowing 
that was not God's will for me. We have to know that he hears us. Dear Lord, I want this. Dear Lord, I need this. If it doesn't happen, it was not his will for it to happen. We have to have confidence in knowing that because he may have a much better direction for you. I mean, think about it when you look back on your life, the plan that you had and the plan that God has. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse, verse 18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Confirmed, it's confirmed that God gives us the ability to produce wealth. And so it's done. So let's look at these. I, I, I feel like these are word. This is these. I have like ten points from the word that I feel help us have true financial freedom. True financial freedom. Because as I shared in the invitation that I sent out, like prosperity now talks about how you know black people are more likely to have debt. And when we make this, when we go into this large amount of debt that we're putting it into investments and they were really referring into residential real estate that in black neighborhoods, the residential real estate, our home values have not grown in the same way that white home values have grown. So when we go into the debt, the debt isn't giving us the return on the investment that we seek, that we're seeking. And there's even um, stories now about um, when black a uh, black person is trying to, and we all know this, unfortunately, tries to sell their home, the black home, even if it's in a white neighborhood, majority white neighborhood, the black home that's being sold was not getting the value offers that the white home owners were getting the offers for the same, the homes in the same neighborhood. So they showed in the research study that they did a different appraisal and um, that when they took down the, the, the things that put it out as a black home, that the numbers fell different. You know, that the implicit biases that have impacted our wealth over the generations in the bold, not just implicit, that's the stuff that's, you know, low key, but the bold biases that have impacted our generational wealth, only God can help us overcome. Only God can help us overcome. Because now when we try to do the same things that others do, it doesn't benefit us because we don't, we're doing the same things that they're doing, but they have second or third generational wealth. So we're going into it with more debt and less money down and increased risk of, 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 of foreclosure, which leads to higher interest rates, which is meaning the debt costs us more. So we have to reevaluate our relationship with debt as a people and reevaluate that is presentation the number one concern or is real financial freedom the number one goal and including God into our financial decisions so that we can have true financial freedom. Because the word says that if you are, you know, constantly owing someone, you are becoming a slave to them. And too many of us are living our entire lives answering and working for to pay back a debt, to pay back a debt, one debt after another, one debt after another. You know? So where is the freedom in that? So my first point is that we are to be way makers. We are to be creators. We are to be creative. We are to be, you know, entrepreneurial minded. 
Because one of the primary characteristics of God is that he is a creator. He made us to be creators, not just workers, but people who actually create opportunities for others. You know, so God has innately put us into the a position to create wealth and to grow it exponentially, not just multiply, but compound it. Because that's how God does. How did they do that? How did they accomplish that? By injecting God into it. Enthusiasm, including God into the activity. Mm. So in Ecclesiastes chapter eight, there's a lot about wealth and um, privileges that God gives to people who practice obedience to his principles. Mm. So let's continue to know how important it is to include God in our decisions so that we can be creators of wealth for our life and for the lives of others. And I'm not talking about um, just what you, um, because just giving money and leaving money to people, you know, does not create wealth. But creating a a, a rule, a, a, a family system, a family, this is how we do things, a code, a purpose. Because for many people, They do not have beneficiaries that are committed to making the world a better place. So they may actually do better by donating their money to a shelter for homeless um, children or for prevention of a cause that you truly believe in or to your um, church that, that has a program that is doing things for um, those who do not have food. I mean, we really need to think about that because we, you know, if you have, you know, we have a responsibility to make sure that our footprint, our time here is spent creating opportunities for others that come after us, building this world, building this world. Not just, oh, I got to make sure that it just goes to, you know, my cousin over there. You know, when you know the cousin over there, it's not about the movement that you have created with your life. So be conscious of when you pass on or what we do, that we're not just throwing, you know, your pearls among swine, that that you're just not, you know what I mean? Throwing your blessings away. Because I believe that, when we just throw and we're not a good guardian over, you know, things that, you know, it blocks our blessings. Mm. So also a second point is that good money management is a big part of financial freedom. Most of the financial problems that people have are because of their own, you know, lack of discipline. You know, often it's people who make a whole lot of income, you know, are finding themselves unable to pay their bills. So it's not an income challenge, it's a discipline challenge. In Matthew chapter 25, verse verse 23, it says, his Lord said unto them, unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. What's the rest of that word? I will make thee ruler over many things, Mm. even though into the joy of thy Lord. You know, so that's from the King James Version. But it's about you have been a good guardian over a few. He will make you ruler of a many because you did right by what you had. So exponentially compounding Growing in ways that are unimaginable is God's will, but we have to be faithful. A third point is wealth is God's will. Just like good health is God's will, wealth is God's will. 
The blessing of the Lord establishes wealth and difficulty does not accompany it. And that's in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. So when the rapper said, mo money, mo problems, he wasn't talking about that wealth that comes from God. Because God said, the blessings of the Lord establishes wealth and difficulty does not accomplish it. So we know that every time people make money, doesn't mean it's wealth. Because we're told we're, we're expanding that financial freedom to us means that you have to have a consciousness freedom. You have to feel good about your relationship with God to have the wealth that God has promised us, that peace, that you're not a multi-billionaire jumping out a window, have things that are unimaginable. At the same time, you got a homeless person that knows God and is faithful and knows that God has a plan ahead, that this is just the trial. Mm. When we're blessed by God, you know, because we're living according to his ways, wealth will be part of the blessing that's established in our lives. Mm. Living according to God's ways. Not only that, y'all, there is no difficulty in the wealth that comes from God. Mm. There's peace. There's peace. There's peace. Doesn't mean you don't have your challenges. You have peace. And the fourth point is faith for financial freedom. Faith, you must know where all things come from. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. That's out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God will generously provide all you need. Key word there. All. All. So a, a, a fifth point is that God provides the investment. God provides the, the root money. God provides, provides the initial public offering. Y'all ever heard of an IPO? That's a, my business. When a, when a business is trying to uh, grow and they want to bring in outside investors, if I, if I wanted to um, raise money, then you can do what's called an initial public offering as a corporation. And you, know, you can offer shares of ownership of your company you know, to the public. Well, God does that for us. God provides the initial public offering. God provides the seed money. So, you know, but we have to make wise choices and be like the farmer so that that seed will grow. So it, it, the word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. So he takes it from the beginning, from the rooter to the tutor. God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. So he's talking about, you know, are they rich? But, you know, they, 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 they so stingy and this and that. They're not, you know, well, they're rich but they're not wealthy. You know, you, 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 wanna, you wanna see wealth, you know, you wanna see somebody who's like, I'm willing to die on E. Cause every part of them, not just their money, every part of me is owned by God. The only reason I'm here, the only reason you're listening is because of God, that's it has absolutely nothing to do with me, his grace. Mm. A six point, look forward, look forward, <laughs> look ahead, learn new things, be open to change. And that's so hard. I know sometimes I, I look at clients 
and, and, and I feel their pain because when I'm sitting there talking to them about these are the things we need to change, do you know how hard that must be? You know, and then sometimes I'm telling people to change from something they've done for 30, 40 years. And I'm like, we need to change. And then I look at that faith that they must have in God, with the God that they must see in me in order to do that. Because there's no way that I could have said anything to give them that kind of faith. I can't. Like, they have to see it. It has to be God. It has to be God. This is your life savings. And God is using me to say, here, this is, this is the possible change that you need to consider. Mm. So in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2, it says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy state. Enlarge the place of thy tent. That's in Isaiah chapter 54. That's when you're like, you know, learning new things, considering different types of investments, not doing what your mama, your grandmama, your grandma, you know, this is how my family always did it. We get stuck there. This is the way it's always been done. It's stuck there. It requires faith to enlarge the place, to enlarge your mind, to enlarge your understanding. It requires faith to always learn new things. And that brings me to my seventh point that we should repurpose over retire. Can y'all feel me on this? Repurpose, repurpose over retire. No. One, one, one of our members, like when she retired, she started Miss Charles. She's, she started doing um, more and more of sign reading. I mean, of um, sign signing, like, uh, you know, I don't, <laughs> Miss Charles, you have to help me. But when, you know, helping people who cannot hear what I'm saying. Sign language. <laughs> sign language, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. People who, who can't, right? Do you realize the blessing it is that when she retired, she said, I'm going to help people. And she focuses on the word. She focuses on doing scripture through sign language. And y'all, if we're real nice, maybe one day she will do it. Like I can tell her the, my scriptures that I'm going to use and then she could put them, you know what I mean? Up for us. That would be beautiful. Like, you know what I'm saying? But repurposing over retiring, like you're just changing from this. But God gave me a new purpose. I gotta, you know, I gotta be good at this. I have to learn, you know, my sign language because these people out here want to know what's being said. Can you imagine going through, you know, a pandemic or going through anything in life? You know, and, and, and you know, and that's when we really started seeing signing a lot, you know, when the when all of the states and the governors were coming out and they'd have the person next to them doing sign language. But, you know, they, they're bring, that's exactly how we should feel about the word, getting the word to everyone as well. We should have that same sense of urgency that Ms. Charles said that I'm going to get these, you know, because there's a lot of people who can hear, but they can't hear. So some God's got to use you to open their ears because some way you might say it, like you'll have your sign language. Your sign language may be with your, with your hand, but your, your language, whatever it is, like my language, my, what, the way I'm saying whatever I'm, God is using me to say is appealing to someone differently than what will appeal if somebody else said the same thing I said. If somebody else said to someone, repurpose over retire, they'd be like, are you crazy? I'm gonna retire, I don't know what you're talking about. Retire, 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 and get my check. <laughs> but but well, God will use us so that I can say, no, in Afroeconomics, we, we really focus on repurposing. And you should see how many people on my Friday afternoon, including Ms. Charles and Ms. Jones, you know, Ms. Perkins, you know, 
they they are in the um, Reverend Bozeman, Mr. Jones, you know, come in on Friday afternoons. These are people that have retired and repurposed. And the Friday afternoons, we do the business, the creator, the creators, the creators. I should change the name to the creators. <laughs> We're creating things repurpose over retire because God is the one who gives our life purpose and then he repurposes when it's necessary. God always has a purpose for us no matter the season of our life. New direction mm. with a brand new blessing. <laughs> I took that for Anthony Brown song that blessings on blessings. He has a line in there that says new direction with a brand new blessing, right? I'm like, yeah, repurpose. Mm. So in Job chapter 23, verse 10, it says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will go forth as gold. So he tested you, he tested you. And then you will move forward as gold. So we have to be able to have that faith you know, because it's scary. All you've ever done is this particular thing. You're talking about repurposing, no matter what. Like, you know, I have people who businesses just walk up to them. We have, you know, a member, and she'd been at that same company for 37 years. And one day they just said, your job is ending. It's being replaced by a computer that now does what you do. You are gone. And even though you have 20, 37 years, we're only gonna pay you for 26 weeks, not 36, seven weeks, because the maximum is only 26 weeks. Even though we said we'll pay you one, um, one month, we'll, we'll only, pay, you know, for one week, we'll pay you for each week of your years of service, you got, you went past the max. <laughs> so that, instead of being rewarded for that, <laughs> they like, look, the company's like, we're not God. We're not God. <laughs> so that is her test. That is her test. But she has to know that she will come forth as gold because God will repurpose her. We have to have that faith. And in financial freedom, my eighth point is that financial freedom is peaceful. It's peaceful. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me in every way. You know, what's the use? What's the use of having all that money and you are angry, tired, um, no energy, um, always mad, um, you know, disgruntled? You know, what is, that's not wealth. That's not freedom. That's slavery. That's anger. That's not God. Thy shalt increase my greatness and comfort me in every way. Psalms 71, verse 21. We should speak that every day. Every day I should wake up. I'm going to start doing it. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me in every way. Y'all feel that? Y'all feel that? Mm, mm, mm. The humility the humility in that. Oh, yes. How are you, Ms. McLeod? Oh, yeah, I was going to. That, the humility in that. The humility in thou shalt increase my greatness. <laughs> thou shalt. Because what? You're giving all of the glory of your greatness to God. God did that. God did that and he will comfort you in every way. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. And the ninth point is generational wealth. Mm. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. That's, the, that's out of Psalms 115, 14 and 15. He will increase you more and more, you and your children, and your children are more than your children. That means anybody that comes behind you, 
anyone that's hearing me right now, you are my child. You are God's child. God is using me to put a seed into you. You know, that I, because God said he will increase me more and more so that I can feed you more and more and I can build you more and more. Give and give and give and give. Think of the entire planet as full of children, no matter how, well, how old they are, of children that you can give to, no matter their color, no matter their, you know, where, where they are from, no matter which hood they live in, nothing. They are our children. And we, God said that he will increase us more and more and our children and your children. Everyone you give to, God is in a position to increase you and them. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Ask God. Ask God for all that you need. That's financial freedom. Ask God for all that you want and need. All that you want. Do not fret if you have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Philippians chapter four, verse six. I remember speaking. I remember speaking to God and saying, I want a sweet man. I want a <laughs> sweet man. I want a really good, sweet man that loves me. Lord, I want to be loved. We just speak it. I had so many people, you know what I mean? Who, because of what we've been through, we don't speak what we deserve and what we want. Mm. Mm. A want mm. is way past a need. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a want. He said he'll give you what you want. Who give you what you want? It's up to us. It's up to us to settle for any less than that. Mm, mm, mm. Thanksgiving. He said, do not be anxious for anything. Calm down. But by prayer, ask. Be thankful. Thank you, God, for all that I have. Thank you, God, for everything that I have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. But dear Lord, I also, because of my true faith in you, and I know that all things come from you, I want, I dare you. I dare you fill it in. Because a lot of times we don't say what we want because you really don't think it's possible. Y'all feel me on that? Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to have a lot of faith to admit to a want. Because I see people, I think, well, you know, I don't, I didn't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't really need all that. But, you know, I didn't, he didn't say that. He said, let your wants be known. No, he's not, you know, you already got everything you need. Mm. So a final point is be generous. For financial freedom, it is important for us to help each other in Jesus name through churches, nonprofits, through our work. Um, you know, we should be developers. We should be creators. We could, you know, think of things, but be generous in every part of you. Be generous in, 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 your, in your dealings, being generous, dare to be generous. In, it's in it, I know it's hard. It's hard. It is hard to be generous when we need so much. But that's where our faith comes in. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine not literally wine. Back then, that was a very important thing to have. <laughs> Look, you're like, yeah, fill my covers with alcohol. 
it's a different wine back then, believe me. In, in Proverbs chapter three, verses nine through 10, honor the Lord with your possessions and your first fruits of all your increase. Does that mean that you have to only give to a certain place or to a certain, you know, I believe that if you are, if God has given you a place that you, um, your church home, and you feel very good about what is going on and how the, um, how the, the church is following the word of God, God is saying, then give, give to that church. Give to what you, what you feel is helping spread God's will. Do you feel that there's a, 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 a homeless shelter? Do you feel that there's, um, that you could, you know, do um, sign language and, and help people? Do you feel that you could, you know, in anything, get the first of it? You know, and, and when I, when God put into my heart that at the first of the week, you start, JB, the first of each week by acknowledging me first. This is the first thing that I do. I give God the glory at the beginning of every week. That's what we do. So we're giving him, we are honoring him with what we have when we acknowledge him with the first fruits of all that we have. Because we can speak and speak and sing and sing, you know, but what are we doing? you know, in order to bring more people to the peace that we enjoy. What can we do? And, you know, and let's do that, you know, and in closing, I just pray that God will continue to use us to serve him, to serve one another. Dear God, help us to have the faith in you that we can know that our cup runneth over that it will not stop, that you're the big pot. You are the big pot, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, y'all, so much for sharing your morning with me. You got any comments before y'all leave me today? Y'all quiet today. <laughs> hey, JB, this is Cheryl. Can you hear me? How you doing, Ms. McLeod? Yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I was in Tulsa last weekend. Wow. And so I, um, I couldn't get your service because where I was wasn't oh. was a malfunction. But I did go to church with one of the surviving um, churches in North Tulsa. Wow. Okay. Um, with all of the there's a lot of focus, of course, on the massacre. Um, there is also the good thing about it all coming to light now has to also do at looking at how, quote unquote, Black Wall Street became Black Wall Street. And um, many of the, particularly the, the pastor's message, shared the reality that the growth, it was actually 40, uh, it was 40 blocks, not just one block. Mm. That, was, that was growth. Mm. And um, even though it's called Black Wall Street, the thing about Wall Street is individual, you know, you've got individuals fighting every day, trying to one up another and buying this stock or that stock. But the communal aspect of the growth in that area was because everyone looked out for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So even though you did have people who earned an awful lot of money, mm -hmm. no one there was suffering or poor because mm -hmm. everybody came together to help everybody else. So you're actually mm -hmm. looking at a whole city, 40 blocks mm -hmm. of communal wealth. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, be you in agriculture, be you in business. It mm -hmm. didn't matter if somebody needed something. The whole community came together mm -hmm. and supported. So everyone was uplifted. And they also, I, you know, I was saying on Wednesday night when you were um, probably making your way back that someone brought that up. And I was saying that I feel that we should not call that Black Wall Street. Yeah. Exactly. Because of the history of Wall Street itself yes. being yes. based on the slave trade, that yes. it's inappropriate for us to connect ourselves with that, you know, and we I keep seeing more and more organizations, I feel, um, using that term. And, and well, it's, I, not, it's not okay. 
you know, right. it's not okay. The, and but I, the, I know that that's what you're saying when exactly you exactly right, you yeah. Said. And, and I, it, I, yeah, I can understand. I can understand historically and everything why it's called that. But when you actually analyze, that's how right. did this area become so wealthy? How did Amen. so many black people earn their wealth? Amen. It was and the, it had nothing to do with Wall Street. They right, didn't exactly even function right. on a Wall yeah. Street style. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, even now was um, one of one of the points I wanted to bring up in our members only meeting was about, um, and then when I looked at my notes, I was like, wow, I forgot to talk about that. But there is a movement now that they're creating businesses and all that the businesses do are raise money. Now these are businesses that go public on the stock exchange and all they do is raise money that they can take the money and invest in other businesses. Yes. We didn't have that. Those businesses on that street mm -hmm. represent the same challenge that back businesses have now. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that, that if these, someone was saying that the businesses were insured, if those businesses were insured, which I know that black businesses back then could not successfully get insurance, you know, well, but the, but the ones who did like have it, if the insurance company did not pay out, they could be sued today for not paying out. The reason you know, that, yeah, the reason right, they did, they they, to, there was insurance. There was insurance because they, it was called a riot. But at the time it was called a riot. And no, I'm just, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I am see, saying they're is, talking about municipality, the communal right. insurance. There's right. no way that a county will protect a businesses from that type of horror. So what we have to do is have insurance as the business owner. Yes. So when you're black and in business at that time, you yes. could not get those, right. those, they would insure yes. slaves, but they mm -hmm. not, would not insure a black business mm -hmm. because right. of that risk involved. Yes. They're like, they can't even get a loan. They can't, mm -hmm. how are they gonna, so you can't go up to like now that, you know, we have businesses now that run commercials, insurance companies now that run commercials because of how restrictive they were on black businesses. For example, nationwide. If you mm -hmm. look back at the lawsuit that lo nationwide lost because of not insuring black businesses, black people who do business with them should be ashamed of themselves. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but we don't know about this. It doesn't make it front and center. You know what I'm saying? That in the companies that people that exist today yes. that refuse to insure those companies need to be addressed. You know what I'm saying? On the laws that existed that did not allow that building to be mm -hmm. insured because it was black owned. And that's really why the commemoration is so important because there was so much silence for so long. That's now right. all of this, it's time to speak it. That's and, right. And people so you feel, can't rebuild. You can't right. rebuild. Like they're, you know, they're saying, well, oh, well, we, you know, they, you know, why didn't why didn't they rebuild? Rebuild with what? What? That's exactly. what insurance is for. You know right. what I mean? And then they they're didn't. misleading us on what insurance is. No, they're talking about what they expect the county or even even FEMA. Like if you want to go all the way to like sue somebody that could have, they could have gone all the way to the federal government. Cause let that happen somewhere now to, you know, businesses, a whole street or something like that. And you see if they don't go all the way to the federal government, that this is a disaster, you know, what so I'm saying? What That's the, an act of war or something, right. you know? So I'm again, we're in, a, we're in agreement. The That's thing, right. the, 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 the lessons learned from what, what didn't happen then, even with, all of this wealth that was in a community says to us what to make sure to guarantee this kind of thing never happens again, where people lose and can't rebuild or restore. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. That's also the importance of mm -hmm. why we need to talk about- But we, about can't, what we can't afford it. Like we can't afford the insurance. Like there were um, a report on the news the other night and they were talking about um, people going through a black neighborhood slashing tires. And I said, if they didn't know, if they knew how much more people now are going to have to pay for their car insurance in that zip code mm -hmm. because of that activity, mm -hmm. all of that is infecting black wealth because you yes. live in the black neighborhood. The black person has to pay twice as much yes. for their insurance to yes. protect their house and their car because yes. of crime that we're committing in our own neighborhood. 
Yes. So if I have a black business and you put it in a black neighborhood, they run the report, that zip code. So you're paying more than for the white company that's paying more rent. You know what I mean? Down the road. Where I live, when I first moved in years ago, I had a different zip code and my insurance, my car insurance That's was right. crazy. That's and right. then the post office sort of, they rezoned and established a new post off, postal zone That's and right. a new zip code. That's right. When the new zip code came in, my car insurance went down considerably. I didn't move. There was That's nothing right. I did. That, but they I see it all the time. Yes. I, I own. One of the services that I provide are insurance. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I did an insurance. I went to a major insurance company. This was Travelers. I presented them with this black person's homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. They said, no, they have too many losses. They went, this same black person went mm -hmm. to a white, a white insurance agency, applied for that same Travelers policy and Travelers did it. Mm. So Travelers had a, a meeting. And I'm, you know, running and I, I'm in the meeting and I asked travelers in front of everybody, you know mm -hmm. me, everybody was white and me, you know, because mm -hmm. there's very few black insurance agencies left because mm -hmm. of this behavior. If mm -hmm. you can't place your customers and they can go somewhere else, you know what I mean? I can't even imagine if that was my only source of income. How are they doing that to us? So, you know, and then they'll say, well, it's because of the size of your agency mm -hmm. or, you know, things like that. Well, how can, you know, how, how that's ridiculous. So what I had to do was connect myself with a conglomerate. Now I can place clients anywhere, but that's mm -hmm. only because they're taking part of my money mm -hmm. to be in that group. Mm -hmm. That's sick. That's mm -hmm. sick. So you can't operate as efficiently and I lose part of my profits. You become less profitable. You know what I mean? Because the extra expense that you have to do because you're black owned. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I mean? That's that implicit, that hidden, that yes. under stuff that, you know what I mean? That when people talk about business, they don't put people like me on the platform. They put mm -hmm. people that work for the county, people mm -hmm. that work for the city, people mm -hmm. that work for the state, but they don't mm -hmm. put the entrepreneur that's been in business almost 30 years that can tell you the truth. That yes. these, you know what I mean? This is the challenge that they're going to have. They don't mm -hmm. want to hear it. They don't want to hear mm -hmm. it from me. I see mm -hmm. it all the time. They don't want to hear the truth. I was, I was on a panel one time and see when I get on the panel, every time I have to come a hundred percent correct because mm -hmm. if I try to appease, I can't help. I can't help mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna come with the truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm on this panel and th these other people that work for people were on the panel and then just me. So mm -hmm. I was like, and they were <laughs> saying that these are the things that you have to have in order before mm -hmm. you start a business. I said, well, if I did all that you said that we were supposed to do, I would have never started my firm. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even start it today. Mm -hmm. They told me, you got to have this and you got to have that and you mm -hmm. got to have that. You know, I started my business with nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what it takes. And sometimes we spend our entire career, you know what I mean? And most of our community has no idea the sacrifice that it takes in order to be in business and mm -hmm. definitely being in business that focus on serving the black community. Right. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And the, you know, that's the story that needs to be told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I hear you. And the mm -hmm. generational so. wealth aspect, the more that really needs to continue to be highlighted. And yep. when you put the numbers together and you show what was what they had mm. and then what they lost in terms of dollars and cents generationally down the line you cannot argue with those facts and figures it's impossible the volume to of calculate. you can't calculate it mm -hmm. they could have been microsoft in there mm -hmm. it could have been you know what i mean like google in there it could have been you know what i mean amazon in there you can't calculate what they stole from us and our meeting on Friday, I was reading from um, and the Entrepreneur Magazine, and I was reading to them where this white man was saying about the challenge of being a black person in business is exponentially harder mm -hmm. than for me being in business. Mm -hmm. I appreciated seeing him put that in his article, but mm -hmm. the reality is this has to change. Mm -hmm. At least we need to acknowledge, mm -hmm. you know, that 
that, you know, this has to be changed. Like how, how we need to do it. And that's why a lot of my dissertation is going to be on biases within financial services against black people. Mm. Like Yahoo did a survey and it blatantly said that black people are unsatisfied with their financial service provider, but yet we stay. Mm. You know how busy I should be? Mm. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, but yeah. ain't nobody running to serve God either. So mm -hmm. who am I? You know what I'm saying? Who, who am I to expect? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Anymore. But nothing will change for us until we change. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see it as, oh, white people have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that we need to acknowledge this mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And see how, you know, but if not, all we're asking for is a job. Mm. We're not asking to be creators. We've given up on that. The majority of black people who talk mm -hmm. about that quote unquote black wall street have no interest in mm -hmm. starting their own business mm -hmm. and taking that chance. You know one of the they just want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? They just want to talk mm -hmm. about it. But what we need to realize is we have a whole generation of coming out of school, black kids who need to be introduced to entrepreneurship because their job opportunities are not going right. to be the same. Exactly. Yep. And yep. they got school loan debt. You know, we have to figure out how to get them excited about entrepreneurship, get their mm -hmm. skills up, mm -hmm. become creators. Mm -hmm. The things that they can do and the technology that provides, they don't have to worry about rent. They can put their products online. You know, they can, yes. oh my goodness. I told this one young lady, she was um, making um, the um, making about 60, 16, a college graduate, $16 an hour. I told her black young lady, you know what I mean? And I, I told her that um, she told me that she could do video, video editing. I said, mm -hmm. do you know what type mm -hmm. of money I pay just for audio editing mm -hmm. when I do it? Mm -hmm. I said, it's over $200 an hour. Mm -hmm. If you can do editing like that and you're not doing it, you're robbing yourself. Mm. But that's happening all the time because we're not teaching them to create opportunities for them. She's settling yeah. because they cover her health insurance. Right. <laughs> we got to let, mm. uh, you know what I mean? We got to let mm. them know. And they're, you know, covering these things, but she's not realizing what she can build. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. That's generational wealth. Yes. Mm. And we get so easily impressed mm. with so little. Mm. Mm. But yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you for <laughs> your message this morning. This was very inspiring. Thank you. You are very inspiring. <laughs> I'm so glad that you went there. I hope next time you'll be able to come in live. I'm live from blah, blah, blah. We will love it. I bring it. I'm excited. If I could, I would. Of course, there was a whole difference for me of our difference. So, oh, you know, yeah, earlier. So your seven o'clock was actually six o'clock for me. Six for you. Whoa. So, yeah, but I was, I was trying to get in, but I was just at a place that just didn't quite have the. <laughs> Look at that. I'm like, night. yeah, and come on video too. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want everything. But that is so cool, though. Yeah. Send us a picture. Look, next time, just send us a picture. <laughs> hey, there's still time to, you know, take care of business. So yes, without indeed. a doubt. Yes, yeah, because I had to unpack quite a few things. There's so many layers. And I'm going to do, I want to do okay. better myself because of technology. I can travel more. You mm. know, one thing about COVID that I've learned that I can do my work from mm. wherever I am. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm going to start traveling more and having our meetings in more different places, you know, and, um, you know, starting with DC, you know, so that um, we can get, cause I got to get that office reactivated, <laughs> been paying bills and not being in there, taking advantage of my services. So let's, let's get back up there. So all of y'all in Maryland, mm -hmm. you know, like Cheryl yeah, mm -hmm. and DC and even Virginia, you know, it's DC not that far and our New York people too. Mm -hmm. um, before we know it, we'll be, it. We'll, look, we'll be looking at each other. Yeah. Um, all right. 
All right. Excellent. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it. Yes. He said, ask for what you want. Dear Lord, I do that, Lord. Please connect us. Connect yes. us. Yes. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. It looks beautiful Thank over here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we got cicadas singing. <laughs> oh, Lord. I haven't seen them. I oh, you haven't? Seen them. Woo. Yeah, we got a whole we got a whole choir going on outside. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, it is totally regional. I remember the last time they came through, I was working in um Baltimore. Girl, they were all over the place. Yes, yes. Maybe it's a Maryland thing. It's a <laughs> you know, and then they started running those things about meals with cicadas and chocolate covered yeah, cicadas. I don't I, yeah, I don't I don't go there. I, I don't go there. I don't. Really you know what I'm saying? Like I I'll be all right, there. but it's like why do people have to turn everything into an edible. Oh. <laughs> but leaves that used to look green now look kind of gold. Oh my god! Because goodness. they're all over certain trees. They just all congregate and come together, and that so it even changes the color of the leaves in the essence when you're looking at them because it's so many. Oh, that's scary. That's not in Virginia at all. That's amazing. I'm, well, I don't know. Maybe, no, you know, more northern. That's amazing. Y'all yeah. see, I, you know, Miss Ramadan is in Virginia. Have you seen a lot of them? I don't, no. I haven't seen any so far this year. No, that's amazing. Well, I guess they, they their pit stop evidently is in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Again. Because I guess the old, like, that's crazy that I was up there that last time. That was, <laughs> that was a while ago, the last time. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Yeah, they're singing wow. as we speak, so. Mm. I'm glad it wasn't last summer. It'll have been too much. <laughs> I, I, yeah, with everything. Yeah, hello. That's true. God is That's merciful. True. You would have been like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> we made yeah. it. Okay. Love y'all. Love you back. Love you, Love you too. <laughs> Take care. Take care. We are Always. worthy. Always. Mm. Yes, amen. Let's do